Jim McKay speaking from Cheyenne, Wyoming. I've been taking that journey for most of my life. This is Wembley Stadium in London. Somewhere it was decided that there's a thing called time, and that we'll use two tools called a clock and a calendar to measure how much of it we have and how we must use it. They are silent tyrants telling us when to eat and sleep, when to work and when to play. These, as measured by the clock and calendar, are absolutes, and therein lies their flaw. The clock and the calendar have no emotions. A shot into the goal! And emotion is what motivates people. It's where the true excitement of sports lies. The greatest two minutes in sport. This is a historic performance you're watching right now. Okay, what will happen to the games of the 20th Olympiad, none of us know what will happen to the course of world history. Open. Oh, I was so excited. I thought of my family and, and my father. He was still his conservative self. He says if something like, congratulations, boy, that's a great plan. I am very sentimental, and I'm a, I'm a, but I found later in life that my father was too. Golf was better off than all one probably did more for golf history and the popularity of the game because the new king was here. Jack Nicklaus finished second with a final score of 282, a new U.S. Open record for an amateur. He says, I played with a kid today, if he'd, if he'd have known how to win, he'd have won by 10 shots. And that was a very nice compliment. As time went on and I started thinking about what I had given away, sure. I mean, I kid Arnold all the time. I said, I said, Arnold, I said, if I hadn't shot 39 last time, nobody had ever heard of you. You know, we go through all that. If you're young and you get beat, it teaches you a lesson and you learn from things. I defy you to point out a game where you see three practitioners who define the game the way each of them did in very distinctly different ways. It became the vehicle that made them millionaires. But at the end of the day, it was still a game that they were in love with as children and, and conquered as men. And uh, he's picked out a landing spot that is a good 25 feet above the hole. There's a good chance he doesn't get this inside the marker's ball. What makes that call in that moment so spectacular is the way the expectation was set up. You've got Tagger looking like he's going to make bogey. This is, it's an impossible up and down. There's no way he's going he's to make a three from over there. And then, of course, the shot unfolds. Well, here it comes. You could go hire the greatest script writers in Hollywood from now to Kingdom Come and have guys to try to write how you would handle the 18 seconds it took for the ball off the face so it finally dropped in the cup. Oh my goodness! Give me something for dramatic effect. It's a 60-footer, and TV doesn't do the ridges in that golf hole justice, and so you can't really tell how big a difference there is between the top tier and the bottom tier. It wasn't as simple as just show up five seconds before he struck it and, and let him take a whack at it. You really need to take the time to set it up with all the, those breaks. And what I like about it best is, you know, in golf, the greatest moments, I think, are punctuated by the simplest of calls. better than most came up. The hair on the back of my neck was standing up, and I was up in my towel. I mean, I was standing up. I was that excited about it. And hopefully it comes across that way. And it just punctuated the whole thing because you have Tiger's fist pump. 
You have the crowd in the background going nuts. I hooked up with him on the course. He said, hey, listen, I've got to go back to the room, clean up for the broadcast. Why don't you come back with me? So I went back to his hotel, the old Ruzak's Hotel. I've watched my whole life Jim McKay from the British Open, and he's about to take the stage for the last time, and I'm back there listening to his final moments in preparation. I mean, I felt like I was uh, backstage in the dressing room with Pavarotti before his last concert. But I tell you, the main thing was on his mind is he couldn't wait to get home. He, he got very tearful just talking about how much he missed Margaret. And he just didn't enjoy the travel anymore, but particularly he didn't enjoy being away from home. What a privilege I've had to be part of what is now being called the golden age of sports, the 1960s and 70s. The 1920s were called the golden age of sports, but only those in the stands ever actually saw Babe Ruth play baseball. It's been written that the past is but prelude. So the greatest hero, the greatest event, are always yet to come. There'll be many more turns in the road of travel, and what will sports TV coverage look like? Will there be a bit more dignity and less theatrics? Will we cover athletes' achievements with more interest than the money they make? We don't know any more than I knew what roads I would travel or for how long more than 50 years ago. I'm Jim McKay speaking from... When Wide World of Sports began, we'd been married for 14 years. Now it's more than 50. It's time for the farm and market.